In my earlier video, I demonstrated the usefulness of the figure format menu when applying a consistent format to a large number of figures. It's helpful if you understand more about how to use the figure format menu. When you create a figure, it will create a certain style of figure. However, this may not be what your lab routinely creates. So you might want to change the default template for figures. So to do that, you go to Edit, Figure Format, and in this case, I'm going to hit Select Example, and it will show you a few pre-made templates that you can choose. If, if I choose this one, for example, I can set that as the default template. So now if I open up an image and then create a new figure, it will create the new figure according to this current default template. In most cases, you're going to want to create your own custom template, which is very easy. You can make that the default template for new figures or apply that custom template to a set of figures you've already created so that they'll have consistent format. So to create a custom template, you first edit your figure. Suppose you've created this figure, and since this is the style that your lab creates regularly, you can set this as the default template by going to Edit, Figure Format, and Create Default Template. This will open up a dialog window. If you had more than one figure on your page, you might want to choose which example objects to use as the examples for your default. And then you hit OK. Now if you open up another image and hit the Quick Figure button, it will create a new figure based on the custom template that you've just created. If using the Quick Figure button does not create a figure that seems appropriate to you, you can fix this problem as well. You can delete the default template. It exists as a file in the My Documents folder. You can also go to Edit, Figure Format, and Delete Default Template. So now, if I take this same image and I hit the Quick Figure button again, it will uh, generate a new template that is appropriate in terms of font size and scale bar size for the image that I just used. You've probably noticed that certain items, like the scale bar for example, are attached to image panels and will move whenever you move the image panel around. Uh, however, you can still edit the location of attached items easily. You can click and drag. Also, by clicking within this little red dot, you can fine-tune their locations. And also, it is very easy to transplant a scale bar in between image panels. Now, you can also drag uh, the handle on attached labels to move them around, keeping the position of every label consistent. If you want more precise control of exactly where your labels are, you can use the Adjust Position dialog, which I just brought up using that pop-up menu. And within this dialog, you can drag within the panel to change the baseline location. And you can put in specific numbers to control really the exact positioning of the labels to your liking. If for whatever reason you want uh, your label or other attached item not to be linked to a parent panel, or layout, you can just right click on its parent and find the release menu. You hit release and now this item's location is completely free and arbitrary. Of course you can easily reattach it to the panel and then edit its location uh, just as before. I can create row labels very easily. I could click on the layout and hit these handles to generate some row labels. However, the more convenient way to generate row labels is by right-clicking on an image panel, going to Figure, Add Labels, 
and hitting generate row labels. This will automatically generate some row labels and the text of these row labels correspond to the file names for the image files that were used to create this figure. Now when I adjust the position of one of these row labels, they all adjust very conveniently. I can also uh, make other changes. In addition, I can double click on a label to edit the text to uh, be whatever I need it to be. By highlighting a piece of text, I can also do things like make a superscript, bold, unbold, or whatever else I might want to do. When creating figures for publication, it's important to keep track of the size and pixel density of your images. If you double click an image panel, it will open up a dialog that also shows information on the image panel, its dimensions, the pixel density, and so on. That same information will be displayed if you drag any one of the handles on this image panel. Now on the bottom of the canvas, there's markers for the inches right here. And if you prefer centimeters, you can just change the size to centimeter units and it will stay centimeters. Now this size might be too big or too small. You can go to edit canvas and make PowerPoint slide size. And if you zoom out to the edge of this slide, you'll see that this figure is kind of small relative to the size of a slide. So you can scale the figure to slide size as well. Figure, scale figure, scale to slide size. It's made it larger now. And this figure will fit more comfortably within a PowerPoint slide. There are several ways to scale your figure. You can select all the objects and do that. You can use one of the handles on the layout to scale it like that. You can go to this menu to scale just the images. You can also control the pixel density of your image panels. Right now I have a relatively small figure in which my images have a DPI of over 500. That's excessive as I want my file size to be small when I export. So I'm going to right click, go to figure, images, and reset pixel density for all images. So you'll be able to visually notice that I'm going to set it to something quite small. Now uh, you have fewer pixels per inch. I'm going to hit undo to change that back.